Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're gonna learn a little bit more about landscape retouching. And I have already released a video recently on some landscape retouching tips with Dodge and Burn. So this is kind of a new field for me. I have been doing landscape photography for a long time on the side of my business, so more as a hobby, but I've been wanting to integrate a little bit more when it comes to tips and tricks for retouching landscape and travel photography onto this channel. So let me know if you enjoy this video. I really wanna know if you guys want me to do more of this kind of content or for different genres of photography. I think I'd be really happy to do that since obviously there's only so much I can do for beauty photography on here specifically. But in today's video, we are going to look at how you can use color to really make an impact with certain elements in a landscape image and really replacing certain colors if you want to give an image that pop that it might need. Uh, this is something that I really wish I had learned a lot earlier on when I was taking landscape images. I would sometimes just look at my images and just feel like they lacked that kind of pop of color in certain parts and particularly with things like water and skies and I really didn't know how to enhance them a lot. So I think over the years of me doing even beauty retouching and things like that, I've picked up a few tips that can actually be transferred really easily uh, onto things like landscape images as well. So I'm just gonna show you a few tips today on how you can do this and how you can kind of make colors pop a lot more in your landscape photos. But as I said, please let me know if you wanna see more videos like this one and let's get straight into Photoshop. Okay guys, now that we're in Photoshop, we've got our image here. And I'm gonna talk through what I really wanna achieve with this image first off. So in terms of making colors pop, I really felt like on the day that I took this image, it just didn't have the right coloring that I'd wanted. I'd seen many images of these waterfalls before and obviously being taken at different times of day, the watercolor in particular can look very different. And for me on this particular day, there'd been a lot of rain previously as well. So the water kind of looked a bit muddier than what it usually does. And it didn't really have that nice uh, emerald green or the bluish kind of color that I'd seen in a lot of images previously. So also with the greens in the image, I kind of wanted to make them stand out a little bit less and still having the color popping, but maybe not as green. Uh, and I really wanted that water to kind of have a little bit more of a bluey tint to it as well to kind of make that stand out from the rest of the landscape. Because at the moment, when you look at the image, it really does kind of blend into the rest of the landscape, which I think in some ways it can look quite nice and it can kind of look like an interesting image. But for me personally with this image, I really wanted that separation between the water and the rest of the landscape. So in terms of doing this and making those colors stand out a little bit more, we're actually gonna tweak these specific colors. now. These kinds of methods that I'm gonna show can actually be done in Lightroom and Capture One as well. You can really easily do this. And if you wanna see more tutorials like that, I can definitely do some for you. So what we're first going to look at is how to really make this color pop a little bit more in the water. And we're gonna tweak it a little bit. Let's first bring up a blank new layer and we're gonna rename this to watercolor. Now I'm gonna go over to the paintbrush tool. We're gonna to make sure that our flow is at 100%. We want a really block color for this just to really experiment here and see what we can get. And in terms of choosing the color for our water that we really wanna tweak it to, I'm gonna choose something in the teals here. So something that's kind of in between a blue and a green to kind of help complement the rest of the landscape. So I'm just gonna settle on around that color, but also making sure that when we go to brush settings here that we've got transfer ticked off. We want more of a solid color for this. And then I'm going to start painting just over the water here and it doesn't have to be Perfect, because we're gonna go in and make some adjustments and tweak it later. Now you can do this in so many different ways. You can use the pen tool if you wanna be really detailed, or you can use kind of other selection methods. Uh, there's actually a lot of ways you can do this in Photoshop, but this is just kind of one of my preferred methods. Then I'm gonna change the blending mode. And it, the blending mode is really gonna be dependent on what your image looks like and how you want it to stand out. So personally, I think I'm gonna go for overlay because it really blends quite nicely on the edges and I'm not gonna to have to do too much cleaning up there as opposed to some of the other options. But also I think it just gives that nice vibrancy. We're obviously gonna bring this down a little bit further and sort of blend it a bit more into the image. But I really like how overlay looks. Soft light is a little bit too soft for me. Uh, and I think we can really work with the overlay a little bit more, that option. So let's go with overlay. And obviously it's a little bit too vibrant at this stage, but we're first gonna just clean up some of the areas around here. So I find that the best way to do this is by using a layer mask. 
And then we're going to use our paintbrush tool, making sure that our brush size is still quite soft and, and a bit smaller, just to help clean up some of these areas. You can actually make sure that your flow is quite soft for this too, just so you can gradually build up certain areas. And then I would go around and clean up some of these parts of the image. I find that you don't usually have to be too detailed with this sort of stuff, but just enough so it kind of blends quite well. And I'm just gonna make the brush size a bit bigger and just go over some of these spots here. Just kind of clicking the brush over that area because I don't want to remove too much of the color. We just wanna make sure it blends nicely. And just around the corners here, just getting rid of some of that really vibrant blue. And if you want to flick back to kind of add a bit more color to those areas, you can just press X on the keyboard and that will switch you back to the white color. I just kind of click these areas just to reduce some of the color, just to blend it a little bit more. And then you can just paint back some of these areas. As I said, just keep flicking back with the X to fill in spots. And sometimes you might find that you've not gone in far enough with the color originally. So to do this, I would just go back to this blank layer here, making sure that the same color is selected and I would just paint in between any areas that need to be filled in. Okay, so once you've actually gone through and cleaned that up, you can see we've got a pretty good solid color now on top of this area. Now we're gonna bring down the opacity a little bit more. So I'm gonna just bring this down quite substantially. I'd rather have a little bit more color to work with with the blending mode than not enough. So I'd probably bring it down to at least around 60%. So you can see that still makes a huge difference. You can bring it down probably even further if you really want it to blend a little bit more but I do want to have that kind of bluish tint to the water. So let's leave it at around 50% and you can kind of see how much of a difference this really does make on the image in terms of letting that color pop. You can go over to this section here, get the paintbrush tool again and just make your brush size a little bit bigger. And you can start to just do other areas that you may want to fill in with that color as well, just to kind of make it all blend. And there we go. So in terms of doing spot color correction like that and really highlighting certain elements with color, this is kind of the technique that I would use to do it on a landscape image, but also for the rest of the trees and landscape, we're actually gonna create another layer and I'm gonna show you how I would sort of tweak the green in the rest of the landscape. Because as I said, I want that to be a little bit more contrasted, not as green as it is now. So. I'm gonna go down here just to the adjustment layers and I'm gonna select selective color. I am gonna move this though below the layer that we were just working on because if I have it above that layer, it's gonna adjust any of the color adjustments we've just made. So we don't want that at this point. Uh, but with the selective color, the main thing that I would do for a landscape image is I'd probably focus mainly on the greens because green is such a prominent color in a lot of landscape images. So let's go to greens. And then I would kind of move down the cyan quite a bit if I didn't want as much green. You can also go into the yellows and that quite often pops up in a lot of green parts of landscape images too. So you can actually increase vibrancy a lot by working with the yellows too. And if I actually push the magentas up in this too, it will give you a little bit more of the, the reds in the image and really help that stand out a little bit more, which is actually 
what I want with this image. So I'm going to move up the yellows a little bit and the magentas just to kind of get that bit more contrast with the image overall. Having this area here too along the rock face kind of like really coming through with the colors there for me is really cool. I think it kind of gives that little bit more contrast in the image. And I really like how that looks overall. Can also go back to the greens and kind of adjust the, the greens as you see fit. So I might just up the greens a little bit just to add a little bit more saturation back in since the yellows have really um, been able to take away certain parts of that. So I can probably leave the greens actually for this as is because I feel like that still looks good without it being too green on the exterior of the image. But if I turn this on and off, you can see how much of a difference that's made. It's still allowing certain colors within the image to pop a little bit more. Also, it's taking away that really solid green kind of look that we had before. So I'm gonna do a full before and after now of how we've actually really tweaked the colors in this image. So going to the before and then the after. So you can see that's just made a really nice subtle difference to the image. Obviously this is more of a personal preference with my, my color selection here, but for yourself, if you use these methods, you can really experiment and come up with some interesting color combinations and really just kind of focus on certain elements a little bit more. These layers are really easy to change as well. So if you've applied your selective color layer and you really wanna change uh, this particular color or you wanna change the blending mode, you can easily go into the blending modes here and kind of uh, reassess how you want the water to look. You can have it really, really vibrant, or if you want to just kind of keep it as is, you can. You can up the opacity a little bit more. Let's do that just for this image now that we've kind of dulled certain other areas of the greens a bit more. So I feel like we can push that a bit further into the 60s kind of there. And once again, I'm just going to do a quick before and after. So this is the before. And then this is the after. So I hope you guys have learned something new today with these techniques. And let me know in the comments section below if you want to see more landscape editing tutorials. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure that you do because I'll be posting a lot more tutorials in future. Let me know what some of your favorite tips are for editing landscape photos down in the comments section below. I always love to hear what you guys like to do in your editing process. Thank you guys again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.